I just turned on the recording. Um, so, good morning, everyone. Um, this is the public deliberation in the case involving 3009 Northbrook. It's case number 2020-0299-SPHA. And this matter is, uh, we know involves a request for um, zoning accommodations of a variety of sorts in order to permit a uh, Orthodox Jewish synagogue, um, oftentimes referred to as a shul, um, to operate at that address. And uh, that has been um, uh, submitted to the board for its consideration. Um, it was, the request was denied by the administrative law judge, but um, of course our review is de novo. So the fact that uh, there is that opinion out there is of uh, only procedural interest, but uh, no substantive interest. Um, I'm Joseph Evans. With me is uh, our Sharon Bernardi and Brian Pennington. Um, and I, I should add that there was also a motion to dismiss filed by the protestants, um, which we deferred, uh, with, I, I honestly forget whether we deferred it or denied it, but it certainly is right for reconsideration to the extent that we need to do that. So, um, uh, I think that's, I think that's the sort of the procedural posture here. Um, and I guess we're ready to begin our public deliberation, unless there's anything I've missed that either of you think needs to be said as a part of the introductory um, portion of this. The only thing, I, I think I heard you say that the ALJ denied it. I think the ALJ granted it. Did the ALJ grant it? I thought the ALJ had denied it. Well, in any event, it's of no moment, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he had denied it, but... Um, it, it really is, as I say, it, I was just trying to set out the procedural posture. So, gotcha. <laughs> um, so um, is there anyone who would like to begin? Um, I, I'm willing to start um, if no one has any. I would defer to you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. So I've been on a number of these cases, um, and um, there are, in, in just based on my own experience, there are, are there are kind of, I've been exposed. I think I would say to two poles. Um, there's one pole where, um, and these happen to both be orthodox. Those other two poles are orthodox requests, but that that's really not the issue. Um, in one of them, we denied the request, and um, it involved uh, the construction of a clearly institutional building in a residential zone, and there was a lot of reason to to um, uh, be skeptical of the candor of the applicants in that case, uh, and we denied it, and uh, it's working its way through, both through the circuit court and federal courts. Um, and uh, I, th I think it's in the fourth circuit now on an Arlupa claim, which I suspect will be denied. Um, then the other one was was a case that was issued, the opinion was issued just uh, several weeks ago involving a shul in the Pimlico area. And in that case, um, the, the view of the board was that the applicants had been quite candid. Um, and had done a great deal to accommodate the neighborhood, unlike uh, the folks in the first case. And also there was strong evidence that people in the um, community, uh, except for a few, unfortunately, were pretty pretty supportive of the uh, of, of the applicants. So um, and in fact, a number of people had signed away. Uh, 
rights that would have given them the opportunity to to assert a private covenant that would have blocked the project and instead they uh, renounce those rights in favor of a shul. So um, there, those were, were kind of the two poles. For me, this one falls kind of in between. And uh, I don't want to, you know, there's no point in my hiding my own view. I, I come out slightly in favor of the application. That's, that's sort of where I am. Um, there are things which concern me here. Um, I thought that the applicants were um, disingenuous, frankly, in their discussion, in their explanation of why they operated um, uh, essentially unlawfully for a while. I thought that I, I didn't accept their explanation, and I thought that uh, uh, to the to the extent that there is a, a question of good faith, I I thought that they were lacking at least in that regard. I was also concerned about um, their website. Now, um, you know, their website seemed to suggest they wanted a large institutional uh, building in a, to house a large congregation. And of course the application here is not for that. Here it's just a modest modification to a house. Um, but it did concern me that they didn't alter their website for two years. I mean, why, why would you not do that? Um, I mean, these, these are not unsophisticated people. And so I, I, I was concerned in my own mind that there was again, some, um, lack of candor possibly um but um on the other hand um the changes to this building are very modest it really almost all only it's uh, really the you know the ramp for the for, for disabled access strikes me as as a non-issue frankly and um there are um so I don't view it as a as a huge, it's not a stylistic disruption to the neighborhood. And um the again, they, they've made arrangements for parking to the extent that's necessary. The building is small, it can't house a whole lot of activities. Um and um I think it can, the RTA can be accommodated to the extent necessary. It it is and it it the fact that there are so many shuls in this neighborhood, um, part of which is in Baltimore City, but nonetheless, there are so many of these. I, there must be, I mean, there must be 25 or 30 little shuls in houses that are sprinkled all over this area. And um, that means that. Um, That means that this is an area that can support this kind of activity. I mean, I suppose there's a question of of, uh, of density and or saturation at some point, but I don't think we're there yet. And um, I don't even know how one would measure that. But the, the point is that there's a, a lot of this activity going on and it seems to be endorsed generally by the community. Um, I also, uh, am concerned about our lupa, which I believe to be a real and authentic issue in all of these cases. Um, and it, um, the county, I, I mean, I could go on and on and on about my own private views of the sort of the, uh, wisdom of, of our lupa, but it is the law of the land and we have to live with it. And Baltimore County has been repeatedly um, uh, obligated to make large payments in situations that frankly are far less, um, far less uh, 
um, uh, compelling than this one. And so to the extent that there are um, zoning accommodations that maybe don't quite fit the technical requirements, uh, you know, my view of our LUPA in this circumstance suggests that we, we should, uh, you know, defer strict up uh, uh, strict compliance where strict compliance would otherwise be um, called for because this is a religious institution. Um, I'm also, um, it also is relevant that it is, uh, that this is a use by right in this, in this area. Um, so, you know, the bottom line is that that's sort of where I come out. I, um, I reject categorically the applicant's suggestion that the RTAs do not apply. Um, Mr. Kelman's argument, uh, which was rebutted by Mr. Perlow, um, is, I think, worthy of being discarded. It's not it's not compelling. I don't think it's correct. I don't think it's accurate. Um, and I don't even really think it merits much discussion, frankly. Um, as to the motion to dismiss, um, you know, Mr. McCann uh, makes a, a good argument, and he always makes good arguments. Um, and his arguments are, are well presented. I. I just don't. I, I I think that the that to accept the argument that um, and it, it boils down to the language. Um, uh, it boils down to the language about what's the exact phrase now. Let me see where did I put my notes here. Uh, now lawfully established. Um, I do, for my own purposes, I, I view that as meaning that anything that is permitted by right is, is what is lawfully established at the time. So I would deny the, the motion to dismiss uh, based, on, uh, based on that interpretation of, of uh, section 1B01.1, point, point B, point 2. So that's my rambling comment, and uh, and as I say, I would tilt. Uh, you know, the the applicant has the burden of proof, and I think the applicant has carried the burden of proof. I don't think this is an overwhelmingly strong case, but um, it is, um, I think, a case that uh, where the burden of proof has been sustained. So that's my view. I would agree with you, Mr. Evans. I think you did a did a uh, good job presenting the uh, the issues here. I agree with you in the Mr. McCann's motion to dismiss. I, I agree that the uh, beat, that's what I call B2, um, now lawfully established would include uh, uses of right. So I agree with that. Um, and I, I, I lean the same way you do. I think that they've done um, a lot to keep the shul uh, in character with the neighborhood. Um, you know, the only the only thing I, that I saw and it, to me it looks a little out of place was the ramp, but the county made them put the ramp in. So, um, and the ramps obviously is necessary to comply with ADA. So, um, you know, private houses have ramps. Right. You know, so. Um, so yeah, I'm on, I'm on the same page as you are. And I have the same opinion. I do have a couple of other comments. I, I was getting very hung up on the motion to dismiss and the whole B2 section around the language of now lawfully established. And, and then I started thinking about if there was a different interpretation, then would there be a constitutional argument against that interpretation considering our LUPA? I, I agree with both of you that our LUPA does apply and so um 
and viewing it that way, when I started to you know, consider Alupa, I think that is especially applicable in this case, you know, given the testimony that um, there are two main sects of, of Judaism and the Sephardic congregation is the only in Baltimore County. And so um, that weighed very heavily with me as well. Um, I do have concerns like you raised around the, um, the congregation operating without the appropriate permits and operating violation of the ALJ's order at the time um, and the neighbor's lack of support of the congregation and the, protest, the protestants' arguments regarding um, whether or not this is truly in the best general welfare of the surrounding residential premises. But then I continue to go back and consider our lupa. And for those reasons, um, I agree with what has been said by both of you. I, I would have been happier to hear the congregation as to the time it was operating without permission. I, I would have been happier to hear them say, um, well, we just did it. Uh, we did it because we wanted to operate. We, we wanted to meet and have our religious service and we just did it and we're sorry, but we just did it. We didn't have any other alternative at the time and we just did it. I, I would have been happier to hear that, <laughs> frankly, than an explanation that I thought rang hollow, which is we thought we could do it. I mean, there, there's, I think no reasonable person could have thought they could have done it. So, um, and, and I know the closing memos did mention that, but it would have been nice to hear that as part of the testimony. It, it, it would have been, it would have been. And, um, but I, I mean, I understand why people don't want to say that, but, you know, um, I get it, but it, it would have made more, I would have felt more kindly if they would have just said that uh, and acknowledged that, that what they did was not permitted and they did it and they did it for a short period of time and then they stopped and so you know kind of no harm no foul I, I would have that's how I would have viewed it but uh, you know it actually caused me more concern that the that, that the they seem to retreat into a position that I found un, unacceptable or unbelievable you know not canned so, um, well, in any event, um, and I thought, I, I also wanted to say that um, I thought the written submissions in this case were particularly good um, on, on both sides. And Mr. Lafiandra and Mr. McCann both are to be commended. And again, I think I said this when we adjourned the, our hearing, but again, you know, they were both extremely civil and courteous in their presentations of their cases. And these cases generate a lot of um, anguish and anger and hard feelings and, um, uh, you know, and it, it, they, they relate to deeply held views that people have, not just about property rights, but about their religious views. And it's hard, I, I think, for everyone to kind of keep cool. Um, but both counsel and their and their clients did so, and I, I, I just I think that's commendable, and I think they deserve everyone deserves credit for that. Um, any other comments anyone wishes to make? No. All right. Well, so we've decided that the application in its many forms will be granted will be granted but not as to not as to the argument that they don't need the zoning relief because the RTA doesn't apply that that we will reject um and if Mr. McCann appeals maybe a higher authority will agree with his legal argument but um Frankly, I, I think not. <laughs> I think I think we're right on that. 
So, um, so with that, I guess we will adjourn. Any other comments? Are we ready to? Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you both. Thanks for having us. As always. Yeah. Bye bye.